Why do tiny dogs have such bad attitudes? Chihuahuas, Pomeranians, what is that about? That, how is that an evolutionary advantage? Welcome back to Nature League. Uh, I am excited and scared for this next segment because it's Adrian and who knows what's gonna happen, but we film it and it's fun and we call it from A to B where my good friend Adrian here asks me a question about the natural world and life on Earth. And this month has been all about adaptations. And so, Adrian, what do you have for me today? Why are pretty much all animals on Earth getting smaller. So I like how you said that like, oh, basically like all animals, but you know, like, humans are totally getting taller. So humans are getting taller, sure, but everything else seems to be getting smaller. Take the ocean, for example. The ocean used to be full of stuff that would make people poop their pants, like megalodons, yes. woolly mammoths, like now we've got elephants. Mm -hmm. We used to have bronchiosauruses. Bronchos I'm thinking bronchi bronchitis, neck? A, bronchi a bronchiosaurus is a brachiosaur mixed with a brontosaurus. It does not exist. <laughs> He's making things up again. The fact of the matter is, is that the biggest things on the yeah. planet are gone, and we're kind of left with things that are not underwhelming, but definitely not as big as they used to be. So, this whole month has been about adaptations, right? So what are adaptations in general? Let's think about a working definition. Things that change mm -hmm. physiologically I like it to allow more efficient reproduction and survival that works with cause and effect though it's not that the changes are happening to fit something it's that change just exists in the form of mutation and then the one that winds up working in the environment is the one that's reproducing more this is the general concept right sure. mutations aren't happening to fit an environment. Okay. It's the fact that mutations exist, so some things are bigger and some things are smaller. In these cases, with a species getting smaller over time, the ones that are smaller are doing better. And so then we have perpetuation of that version of the gene. Okay. What would be good about being smaller? What are, let's think about some, why it would be uh, an advantageous adaptation. So the obvious would be so you could hide more easily, mm. right? That's, to me, that's the obvious. But I would argue that unless it's a dramatic and very fast change, I would argue that very small adaptations of size and mm -hmm. changes of size would be so nominal and unimportant that it wouldn't make a difference. And it shouldn't make a difference. For example, just because the whatever is that much tinier than that other whatever, that one's not gonna be able to hide more efficiently than the slightly bigger one. You might be right in terms of hiding, but hiding is kind of an, a, a higher level thing to do. I think you should think a little bit more, uh, a little more basic. So let's think about the idea of eating. What are you requiring diet-wise if you're smaller? Less. So in environments that might have less food availability, right? If you are consuming oh. less, you know, in terms of calories, in terms of just mass, then maybe it is advantageous to not be eating so much, right? Are you hinting at something? I don't like this. You can eat whatever you want. And I do. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect, but if food were limited, a smaller version might do better. Now let's think about something else. There's pros and cons. There's a really interesting thing about metabolism and body and heat for something like a mammal that produces its own heat. And it has to do with body size and ratio. So as we get smaller, what happens to the ratio of like outsides to insides? Gets closer. The outside actually gets bigger, like the ratio. Yeah, kind of interesting, right? So surface area actually increases. What? What? As you get smaller. That's what? Surface area doesn't increase as you get smaller? That doesn't make sense. A marble does not have as much surface area as a basketball. The ratio, my dear. So the volume to the surface area. And so for cells, cells are so small because it maximizes how much the outsides can interact with the environment by not losing the insides. Because as you get bigger, again, that ratio gets smaller and you have less outsides to insides. Okay. So as the smaller something gets, it can heat itself a little bit better? It's actually kind of the opposite. So think about heat loss. So if you're something that makes your own heat, right? You, we call that like an endotherm. So you're making your own metabolism, right? You're not relying on the sun to heat you like maybe a reptile. Okay. You're making your own. If you are smaller, then that ratio of 
right, your outsides, you would actually have more heat loss. The whole point here is that there's pros and cons with adaptations. Let's think about some other things when you're smaller, how much space you need. And let's think about the amount of space on earth with urbanization and some <sighs> sprawl and habitat availability. So for example, on islands are actually a great example. Island dwarfism is actually what it's called. So you're, you find smaller versions of species on islands. And a lot of that has to do with spatial boundaries. Oh. So if we think about the way that we humans are affecting the landscape and kind of making it fragmented almost like islands it's possible that that restriction could maybe also be playing a role as natural resources continue to be diminished across the planet do you think the species that will survive in the future are just going to keep getting smaller until every big cat is now the african kitten i think it's possible but i also think that in terms of adaptations there has to be really intense selective pressure and we will see how much that pressure exists or doesn't exist in the future in different habitats and environments it'll depend but it's certainly something to keep our eye on and scientists are looking at that right now there are several teams that do things with body size and metabolism to see how that happens i mean we kind of don't know the limit right we don't know the mins and the maxes humans are getting taller and in fact i think there's something like i mean close to like 10 centimeter growth and average human height in like 150 years. I mean, that's insane, yeah. but it's actually leveling out now. And so we think that there might be that kind of maximum. Sure. And for getting small, we know that there's that minimum because of that ratio, so mm. the ratio goods, right? That being said, there are some really cute small things. There's like chameleons that are like an inch long. Oh, oh. <laughs> look at the chameleon. Concordantly, that's a word, I'm using it correctly. Why do tiny dogs have such bad attitudes? Chihuahuas, Pomeranians, what is that about? That, how is that an evolutionary advantage? Like how, how, how did that little tiny ch Chihuahua, its horrible yip become an advantage? Because all Chihuahuas do it. All Pomeranians are yippers. All the tiny dogs are yips. They have smaller vocal cords, it's just the sound. No, like. but they all the time. All the time. Separate issue. Oh. I'll answer it for you sometime, but I think that that one requires a little bit of deeper digging <sighs> into some behavior issues. Fine. F-Y-N-E. Fine. Fine. Thank you for joining us on this adaptation uh, adventure on From A to B, where my good friend Adrian asks me, Britt, about something about life on Earth or the natural world or why small dogs have attitudes. Make sure to tune in next week where we are going to dig into our brand new topic, which is evolution and speciation. Pretty cool. We will see you then. Mm -hmm.